Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following along. This video, I wanted to explore a design element that um, a lot of fountain pens have in common. And my main motivation to doing this were these Moon Man 600 series pens. This one here is the M600, which was the first one that came out and also was the most expensive one and had a German Schmidt nib in it. Then here's three examples of the M600S, which basically looks the same. The clip has changed, but they cost around uh, a little bit over tw between 20 and 25 US dollars. And here's the latest one I got in this beautiful uh, cracked ice pattern. The other pen that predated the Moon Man was the Kaigaloo 316, which is shown here. This is the original one that I bought. But these uh, would be out of context if we didn't compare it to the second generation of the dual fold from Parker. This one came out in the late 1980s. This is the first commemorative one, supposedly commemorating the Big Red. We need to compare that to the original Big Red here which is a later model because you can see it has two bands and to the far right here in this jade model we have one of the earlier editions of the dual fold that has a single band here at the bottom both of these have a ball at the end of the clip so does the original moon man m600 the uh, re-edition had this more modern version of a parker clip which I think is an evolution of the one that came out in the vacuumatic in, in the early 1940s, late 1930s. The Kaigaloo has something, it's kind of a, its own design, but the Moon Man followed that arrow pattern for their clip on these models. So the Moon Man pens would have made one of my best of 2019 pen lists, but I wanted to do a video just on that and also this flat top design which is mimicked in a blind cap, which is sometimes a pseudo blind cap at the bottom. The original dual folds had this because they were button fillers, so you needed a cap that was removable to use the button that would have an internal lever system here that depressed a rubber sack. Obviously a cartridge converter for the remake of the dual fold and all the Moon Man versions are uh, cartridge converter design, but yet they still maintain that blind cap element. They added a metal ring. All of them have a clip that's attached from a finial, which is generally black. All these have a black finial, which is independent of the color of the cap and, and barrel. And the same thing with the blind cap at the bottom, also black. Here, this is a method of attaching a clip to a pen. This unscrews, and then the clip can be easily replaced or repaired as needed. And, and in the Parker models, this cap, this finial, also was part of the inner cap design that's sealed up against the section to keep the nib from drying out. So in looking at this dual fold design, to go back to the original, Parker wanted to make a larger pen. Then these had pretty good size nibs on them, so that was nice. And they also wanted to make a pen that would last a long time, be easily repaired, but yet not follow any of the traditions of some of the pens that preceded it. No lever filler, streamlined look. And with these straight cap and straight barrel, it kind of minimizes the tooling and minimizes the work needed to be done. This cap design was very good for serving a number of purposes because this design is functional first, aesthetic second from, from my viewpoint as an engineer. And they incorporated some of the basic traditional elements of a, of a cap band, which has been maintained through different versions and variations of the model. So I just think this is a phenomenal design characteristic, which has survived almost 100 years. 
So we're going to delve into some other pens that follow this design and see how they have evolved and used it. Here's some modern interpretations of that classic flat top dual fold design. I've included two more of the modern dual folds. Here's a Centennial, here's an International. I did full reviews on the International. Here we have a Sailor Pro Gear, Pilot 91. And here we have some Delta versions. And they did some interesting takeoffs on it. Black cap, cap the same color as the body, the barrel and the cap and the blind cap here. The Pelican has that blind cap, but it's a functional blind cap. But then you go to this Delike, and it's just an aesthetic blind cap. Here we are on the Noodlers, and that's a functional blind cap because it's a piston filler. Then we go to this interesting Alive in You model, which this actually comes off, but it's not functional, and you could lose that little ring. Here's two pen BBS pens, the 355 and the 309, and both of those have blind caps which are functional. And I chose this one to show that the blind cap and barrel are not the same, but they make some transparent ones. Here's a pen BBS 352, which is similar to the I have a new one, is that this blind cap is not functional and it does unscrew. And to me, that's not a good design. I would have uh, glued it on. And then I just wanted to do a little bit of history. Here's a Schaefer pen, which to me was put out to try to emulate the dual fold with the black ends, but they're just painted on. As you can see that the same material is there. So they're, they're, they're really uh, totally aesthetic. And that just uh, goes to show you that copying and mimicking and all those other things were done Throughout the history of pens, it's not something new to some of today's pens. So I have these pens here to show how versatile this design is. In the middle we have the Sailor Pro Gear, and next to it is the Pilot 91, and here's a 74, and here's a 1911 Standard. This one was interesting because they made the top finial and the blind cap black, kind of reminiscent of the design attributes of the original dual folds. In most of these pens, the blind caps and the finials are the same color as the barrel and the cap. And in all these cases, these are all design elements. You know, they're same type of clip design with the clip and the ring and this finial holds the clip on. But, but this design has certainly been utilized by millions of pens from thousands of manufacturers and I'm certain will continue to be used as time goes on. So I'd just like to finish up with these five pens as talking points on pen design and again focusing on pens with flat tops but also the blind cap and finials have some relationship to the design. So I have the Delta one here. So not only did they mimic the dual fold design, they also took the roller clip from the Wall Ever Sharp design. It's a nice marriage of, of two different design traits. And that's what a lot of pen manufacturers do. And, and I spent a lot of time in my career in product development for a large uh, commercial entity. And we would sometimes make a million pieces that we sold through a direct sale. So I'm familiar with sitting in a room with design, marketing, sales, and of course product development and marketing would want something. Design would have to come up with some design. Marketing might have brought in a competing product or something they thought up or, or bought that maybe cost a thousand dollars and they said we need to make this and sell it for ten dollars. And then sales would say, well, I can sell 100,000 of those if you give it to me at $10. So that's 
you know, an iterative process and there's certainly a lot of creativity on it and there's certainly a lot of mimicking and copying because successful designs that sell well tend to result in other versions of them. And the iPhone, I think, is a good example that has set the design for a mobile phone device and nobody's really been able to come up with a different one that can be anywhere near as popular. The other thing is, is the evolution of how this clip has changed a little bit from, you know, a vintage design to a modern design. And they, the, the Moon Man, I think, did a phenomenal job. I think better than Kai Glue, but very similar. So the differences between the two are not significant. The Kai Glue is much heavier, so it has that feel to it because there's more metal bits to it. But I really love the acrylics that both of them are using. And the pens all feel great in the hand. And that's the thing to end with is this design works well as a writing instrument. Not only does it provide you with some functional features, but it also provides you with a great writing experience, a good balance pen. None of these pens are great posting pens. They do post, but they're going to be a little long and potentially back heavy depending upon um, the pen that is constructed and how the weight is distributed between the cap and the barrel. But enjoy these pens, enjoy all pens, and, and hopefully you found this little dive into a particular design aspect of interest. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you have any other uh, thoughts and ideas of something you'd like me to explore with pens, I do have a lot of examples and part of creating um, a video to me is having content, real content, you know, not a photograph because you really can't touch and feel a photograph and, and get a real sense of that item that you're trying to critique. But we do what we can. So have a great day. Have a great life. Enjoy your writing experiences and, and, and just hopefully take advantage of this excellent, phenomenal world that we live in that gives us so many choices and what we want to use to put ink on paper. And that's the important part is eventually, hopefully your choice encourages you to put ink on paper. So I've reached the end of this video. We're going to say bye for now until the next video.